Hi, welcome to this episode of Gridiron TV. I'm your host, Stuart Young, and I'm joined again by Alan Price. On tonight's show, we're going to be talking about the Jim Kreiner Coaching Clinic, which is coming up in the next two weeks. Alan? Yep, we're also going to run through the scores from last week's BAFA National League's games. And also, Gridiron TV will have a major announcement towards the end of the show. So, to hear that announcement, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hi and welcome back. So first of all we're going to talk about the upcoming Jim Kreiner coaching camp. Uh, we've discussed this on the show before. Uh, previously we were uh, expecting uh, a, a players camp to be held. Uh, it's changed slightly now. It's going to be a coaching focus. So coming up on uh, 31st of August to the uh, 31st of July, excuse me, to the 2nd of August, um, they're going to have like coach Steve McCusker, sort of a legend of the, the UK game, mm -hmm. Scottish Claymores, etc. Uh, as well as former Scottish Claymores head coach Jim Kreiner are going to be running a, a, a coaching camp for coaches in particular. So we've had a few camps we've seen in the past uh, here focusing on player talent, but now they're going to come over and actually try and work with the coaches, mm -hmm. um, doing things like learning how to study game film, plan for games and so on. So hopefully that means that we get a lot of coaches coming by and can actually learn from, from these coaching legends and, and then take that back to teams around the country. We talk about legends of the game, Jim Kreiner, um, you know they got a better legend in the, in the game with the Scottish Claymores than Jim Kreiner. I know we had issues with attendance, mm -hmm. which is why it was postponed and, and rescheduled. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been hearing that the attendance levels have gone up this time round. Is, yeah. is, is that looking positive to go Yes, yeah, so we got a lot of uh, good response actually. A lot of people will be mm -hmm. attending. There will be a short period for players to attend mm -hmm. on the second day to actually uh, run through some of the drills and get some coaching themselves. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, in terms of numbers, it's looking good, but uh, you, you know I think there's, there's still a little bit of time left. If anyone's watching, looking to get involved, you can certainly search them on Facebook or send an email and try and register in time. So, Alan, if people do want to get involved, what is the actual email address and the contact details? Well, they can go through the, um, Facebook in particular. There's a, a page set up already. Uh, we'll also post details on our website on, on how to get in touch with the camp. Mm -hmm. uh, you can leave details. You can register there as well. And then the coaches from the camp will, will get in touch with everyone to give actual specific details for start times and locations and so on. But it's going to be based in uh, Glasgow. Uh, the, the Glasgow Tigers are going to be hosting it. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a nice facility. Uh, I've seen games played there, so it should be a good event. Excellent. And uh, we'll give you the, the, the information to the Good Island TV website at, um, just at the end of the show. So don't go away. For me and Alan will be discussing the results from last weekend's games. Welcome back to Good Island TV. Alan, let's look at the last week's results. We're approaching, you know, the, it was a penultimate week really mm -hmm. in the season um, and certainly everything to play for in regards to you know, playoff fixtures and, you know, and playoff slots. How was things looking at the weekend? Any games that really sort of sprung to mind? Some big scores, in fact, and mm -hmm. tight matches. There were a few games that were to confirm a team's spot in the playoffs, but there's some that are still fighting, actually. There's, mm -hmm. there's kind of a two- to three-way battle in some of the divisions uh, for that top spot and number two spot. So uh, some big scores, uh, a couple of narrow ones as well. So mm -hmm. it was an exciting week, actually. I mean, certainly one of the biggest ones we looked at um, over the weekend was the Sheffield Predators against Manchester Titans. Uh -huh. um, and it went the way of Sheffield uh, Predators. I think people kind of predicted that one. Um, you know, was it a good game and all? Absolutely. It sounded like an exciting game, actually. Mm -hmm. They won quite convincingly now. So that three-way battle with those two teams in Chester, they, they, that they are looking likely to, to be number one. Uh, no, I think, I think they are. I think they can the, the one now, yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, was, it certainly sounded like an exciting match. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of points scored. Uh, mm -hmm. Sheffield just falling short of the 50. Themselves 49-12, to 12, the final score. 
Good. So what other games have sprung to mind in regards to divisional playoffs then? Well, if we look in the, in the divisions as well, we had um, um, Milton Keynes and Bevacher playing the, the second of their double header in two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, Milton Keynes coming out again on top. Uh, so uh, that puts them in second in behind the Saxons now, who mm -hmm. uh, due to the, the last games not going ahead, they'll, they'll finish actually with a perfect record. So I know, they I know that they're very happy with that and they're looking strong for playoffs. So Alan, let's look at the Premier. Mm -hmm. leagues now. Um, we've got to give a very special congratulations to the London Warriors who have uh, won the Premier South 9-0 um, mm -hmm. for the season. That's a fantastic, <laughs> fantastic effort for them. Definitely. It's a tough division. Every year you've got so many big teams down there so it's, it's never easy to win games there but mm -hmm. uh, to be so strong all year it's a, it's a good credit to the organisation. I mean absolutely. The fact that they're up against the Blitz every year and the Blitz have been so fantastic over the last three, four, five years mm -hmm. and also playing in the Euro Bowl. Yeah. Credit to the coaches, credit to the players. You know, 9-0 and, oh, and with uh, the London Olympians taking up the third place slot. You know, it's just London, yeah. London, London. Yeah, so it's that, that, that dominance in town. Mm -hmm. uh, they definitely, you know, the Olympians are, uh, another win at the weekend so... Yeah, you've got those top three teams, the three legendary teams of UK football, uh, all yeah. doing well this year. And congratulations to them. Let's look at the uh, Premier North. Um, mm -hmm. We look at East Kilbride Pirates up against the Doncaster Mustangs at the weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll win, but yep. that's them clinched the Division North. Yep. So congratulations, so congratulations to our friends at East Kilbride for that one. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything else to play off with regards to getting that last slot? Well, that was, uh, like you said, it was an exciting match. It was uh, sort of back and forth, <laughs> following it online. Um, Pirates able to go ahead with the, mm -hmm. the score with uh, not long left in the game and then and hold out uh, mm -hmm. for the victory. So yeah, they've been uh, impressive all year. Uh, and then Doncaster right in, in behind. So uh, all, all across the Premier, we've had a couple of slip-ups with some teams... Uh, not being able to take part or kind of suffering quite a lot of losses but yeah. in general there's been a lot of, of tough and exciting matches mm -hmm. um, through the year and so I know that you know, people mention it through the, the restructuring and changing of things mm -hmm. uh, there's no, no doubt going to affect people slightly but I think it's still been a lot of competitive football all year Good. Um, again congratulations to the teams in, in that conference as well and we look at Division 1 we look at Division 1 North West Coast Trojans clinched that one yep. um, with a, another outstanding Convincing. victory against the Coventry Jets in a whole we look at the West Coast Trojans we look at Gary McNeen, you know, the, the team that's put out there very rarely scored anything under 45 points I see. absolutely you see the scores and it's, there's so many games in the 40s and, and, and 50 in, mm -hmm. in this case this week so they've certainly got a lot of power on offence as you mentioned 50 touchdowns in two seasons is, is immense for any receiver on any team. So mm -hmm. um, they can certainly move the ball th on the ground, through the air, uh, and also tough on defence as well, only you know, hardly giving up any points. So they are sending a message, absolutely, and it's going to be tough for any team that's visiting them through the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So Alan, with West Coast Trojans taking the, the title in Division 1 North, who do you think is going to take that second slot for the playoffs? I mean, it's, you've had like... Like Nottingham and Lancashire, the two behind them. Uh, mm -hmm. Nottingham had a very sort of a compressed season at, at the start, uh, doing really well, uh, and then Lancashire as well, coming off another victory this weekend. So mm -hmm. um, Lancashire a game behind, but you can't count them out. You know they've, they've been doing well, been quite consistent. So mm -hmm. um, it's I'd probably put it to Nottingham, uh, just given their early form, um, they've had t time to get their backups in place and, yeah. and get them game time. So. Going into last games and then playoffs, it, it should make them more more balanced and more rounded. It's going to make it certainly close and interesting to watch. So let's let's move back to Division Two again. We saw um, we talked about Division Two North. Uh, mm -hmm. We knew Edinburgh has already made the playoffs. However, they need to win their last game to clinch a championship. Yeah. Um, Glasgow have come back from nowhere yeah. and surprised everybody. And you know, not to say surprised. They've actually played really well all season. Glasgow narrowly losing in mm -hmm. some games, but they go up to Dawson Park and Dundee and mm -hmm. win. Yeah. Not comfortably, but the win. Just, yeah. And now they see themselves with a home game against Clyde Valley Blackhawks mm -hmm. with a chance to clinch that second spot in the playoffs. Yeah. What a great season it's been for them, a great cup turnaround. Yeah, it's a, it's a real example. We've seen Glasgow in previous years of they're quite a tough team. Mm -hmm. they, they keep fighting, you know, whether they're they're winning or, or losing. Um, they, they, they keep working, keep fighting. So this is it's quite a turnaround to see them just... You know, we were talking about uh, Edinburgh, Clyde Valley and Dundee being those top three and mm -hmm. then and suddenly Glasgow is just, you know, uh, ignoring everyone and, and wanting to come back and get that second spot. So that'll be a, a, a very tough, interesting match to watch. Yeah, um, definitely will be. There's a game I know you want to mention in um, regards to offensive yardage this week. Yeah. It's uh, rather phenomenon. <laughs> 
Do you want to tell us a little bit more about yeah, that? Yeah, this is the kind of game you'd maybe see uh, pre-season or early season when everyone's still fresh, but it was uh, East Kent Mavericks and Sussex Thunder. Mm -hmm. uh, so Division 1, Central and South, uh, kind of top teams uh, battling it out. And in the end, it was 55 to 46 to East Kent, but over 900 yards offensively combined between the two teams. That's very, very that's, impressive. That's incredible. There was nearly 400 rushing yards for... Uh, yeah, yeah, so you, both of them just, just moving the ball up and down. Everyone who was there just, just said it was an incredible match to be a part of, the players, uh, incredible to watch for fans as well. So, um, yeah, amazing amazing football, 900 yards in almost the last week of the season. You know? Which is brilliant, <laughs> which, you, which you want to see. You want to see it across the whole, the whole uh, season. And we'll obviously speak to uh, Sussex Thunder TV. We'll try and get some footage for, for our fans out there. So any other scores you want to wrap up, Alan, for the Well, weekend? let's run through a couple on here. Um, uh, Division 2 West, we've got Oxford um, cementing their position at the top. Mm -hmm. uh, you're now looking at Bournemouth, who are going to take that second spot there. Yes, that's right. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, with, with Cornish forfeiting a game earlier in the year, it makes them ineligible for playoffs. So although they've done really well, they're going to kind of suffer as a result. So uh, Oxford, 21-12, um, so they'll, they'll take that one up top. Mm -hmm. um, going back to... Um, Division 1, you've got Cambridgeshire, sort of mid-table, but making the best of it, 68-14 to 14 against Essex. So mm -hmm. uh, another stinger for the Spartans there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But a nice round-off for, for the Cats for their season. It certainly is, and they've done really well again this season. So you know, good luck to them going into next season. I, I don't know how they are in the, 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 the close season of the playoffs. But uh, DC Presidents again, another loss. Yeah, so Lincolnshire still fighting strong in the second half of their season. Um, still putting up a lot of points, so... They've consolidated their season nicely and, and DC have got a, a good few things to, to go and look at during the off-season, uh, on the field certainly, to, to look at taking what they've learned in their first year yeah. and then building on experience and trying to come back with more wins next year. But well, I hope so. Well, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll see them come back. Yeah, so absolutely. obviously we've, talked, we've already touched on the Manchester-Sheffield game, which was a big game up in the um, Division 2 yeah. uh, um, this weekend. So any other games that are going to stick out for well, you? Well, we mentioned the one we discussed uh, during last week in our midweek scores roundup, the uh, Lancashire and Merseyside. Mm -hmm. you, you put your he head <laughs> in the noose there and, and said that Mersey would come away with their first I did. victory. And to be fair, they, they almost did it. The Lancashire went ahead. Uh, Mersey came back with two fairly quick scores around half time, uh, but they couldn't go any further. So 14 to 12, they, they lose another one, but uh, you almost made it. You almost, oh, almost did it. And to be fair, you know, and, and all credit to, to uh, Merseyside Nighthawks, they've never given up on any game. And people I've spoken to, and you know, they might be, you know, winless for the, for the whole season. <laughs> you know. Next season is going to be a good season for them. I, I, you know, they just need to tweak things a little bit maybe in defence. Yeah. I think you know, we'll see them bounce back and hopefully be can, you know, title contenders for, yeah. for the division. But Alan, just there, there's a few other scores you want to quickly mention. Yeah, we'll wrap up another few scores. It was a very high scoring weekend. So I think a lot of teams on their last game just, just giving it their all. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll run through Gateshead 45-0 against Shropshire. So again, they dropped to 1-8. So they've got some 1-8-1 uh, and one in fact. So mm -hmm. they've got some work to do in the off-season. Uh, we've got um, Sheffield, as we mentioned, 49-12. We've got Colchester and Watford, so it was 48 to 43. So again, over 90 points scored in that game, a, a fantastic finish to their their season. Um, and then we've got Crew and Staffordshire, so kind of two other struggling teams in Central, uh, over 40 points for Crew again. 42 to eight was the final score. So uh, the team is just getting rid of all their, their offensive the firepower for the last game of the season, just getting as many points on the board as possible. What, what I like to see Alan as well is, is a lot of these teams have nothing really to play for, other than pride, and they're still going for it. They're oh, still same. going for it, and that, that's the beauty of the sport, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You just, just don't give up, and you just keep going for it. So yeah. congratulations to all the teams for, for this weekend. We will be posting up all the fixtures for this weekend's games coming up. Bear in mind, a lot of games there to be won for playoff contention. So me and Alan will be doing a wee separate show during the week where we'll be posting up and giving my predictions in regards to the games that are going to be played. So don't go away, go down on TV. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Great Iron TV. At the top of the show, we mentioned we had a major announcement for you. And as we approach the end of the season, we're coming into playoffs and the annual Brit Bowl, uh, an event that a lot of you have already attended in the past. Uh, a whole weekend of uh, football from the top teams in the country. Well, you're still welcome to attend this year, but if you can't make it all the way down to Don Valley Stadium, you can watch it live via Gridiron TV. That's right, Gridiron TV are going to be at the game for the weekend, in fact, streaming the entire event live. We'll have Division 1, Division 2 and Premiership and even the Junior Finals all within the stadium live on the internet. So, Stuart, that's a, 
uh, something we've been looking for for the sport for a good number of years. Can you give us a little bit of background as to how we as a, as a team have been going around this? Yeah, it's been, it's been, you know, I spoke to the National Leagues and approached them on behalf of Gridiron TV on the back of our filming the Boafo finals as well. Um, and we spoke to the National Leagues and we, we basically put ourselves forward. We, we submitted a proposal to them um, for what we can do as, as a team um, and what benefits it would have to uh, Brit Bowl. Um, and they've uh, accepted our proposal to stream the games live. Um, bear in mind, it'll be streamed live via the Bafana website and it's free of charge. Um, which is really good as well. So not only do we see guy, people turning up at the game and paying the prices um, to watch all four games, I believe it's mm-hmm. £10 for either one game or all of the games, which mm-hmm. is a good price structure yeah. as well. It gives Britpool the chance to get out there to mainland Europe, get people to actually watch from different countries, and, and including the United States. That's right. So uh, again, if you can't make it from around the UK, you can watch it online. But we're also uh, so delighted to be able to promote UK football mm-hmm. to... Europe and America and the rest of the world so uh, we, we certainly know we've, we've had people watching Euro finals, Polish finals and, and uh, German football and Austrian football and now they'll get the chance for all of yep. the continental players to come watch some UK football as well. It is Alan and it's the first time it's happened for, for Brit Bowl as well and, and this is what we really really reiterated to the national leagues that we could do this as, as a team, we've got a team full of experts and dedicated staff at Gridan TV mm-hmm. um, and we've all pulled our resources and we all believe this can be done. Um, everything's in place now, um, so it will be officially announced obviously via the, the national leagues as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is just credit to Good TV. This is credit to, to the national leagues, yep. and you know this is something they've been wanting to do for some time. Um, we're just giving them the outlet to do that. They've been looking to do this to try and promote the, the British football across the continent and across the sort of northern uh, Americas as well. Yep. And this is the chance that they've been given, and we will be able to do that for them. And certainly, hopefully, we're going to see a cracking weekend with some great teams um, playing some really good football. Yeah, we'd also just like to quickly uh, pass on a thank you to all of you out there, actually, all the teams and all the people that have been watching and supporting us through the year. And um, we hope you'll continue watching and uh, also, of course, watch the Britball weekends. And we'll also, what we'll close it as, as it comes up, Alan, we'll be putting on all the details where you can go and actually view the finals and we'll give you mm-hmm. times and kick-off times for all the games. And also we'll be doing live interviews as well from the stadium, so, so stay tuned for that. Yep. If you want to get your team involved on Gridan TV, you can simply drop us an email at gridantv at gmail.com. Yes, and as always, you can tune into our Twitter, which is at gridan underscore TV, where you can hear announcements about upcoming events, including Britball Weekend, as well as live score updates from the last few weeks of the football. And also, if you want to get us on Facebook, you can come and also like our page and, and see all our weekly and daily updates on Gridan TV, just on Facebook. Yep, or you can just go straight to the website at www.gridirontv.co.uk where you can view all our previous episodes as well as all the results from previous weeks and upcoming fixtures for the upcoming rounds. So, my best best thanks to uh, Alan Price and from myself and everybody here at Gridiron TV. We'd like to thank you for watching and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>